So we decided to take a brisk four hour drive this morning from Miami to Edgewater, Florida to meet Chris Walker and the team at Everglades. And they're nice enough to give us a factory tour today. We've heard nonstop great things about the process, about the quality of the boat. We've experienced the 455 lightly, which we have the video. If you have not seen it, go check that out. But Chris is gonna show us what's under the hood and what creates Everglades boat. So Chris, thank you first off great, for taking the you. time. We're very awesome. much looking forward to this. Let us know what we're gonna see. Awesome, great. Well, I'm Chris, Director of Design and Naval Architecture here at Everglades. We're real excited to show you our boat, so I'm glad you're here. Right, thank you so thank much. You. All right, let's go check them out. All right. Rapid molded core assembly process, right? So that's unique. Nobody builds boats like, like Everglades, right? And we call it Ramcap. So you've been on the 455, right? That's the only mm -hmm. one you've been on, right? Yep. So uh, hopefully you like the ride. Our customers love it. Uh, very smooth, very solid, and quiet too. Yeah. And uh, and that's all due to how, how we build the boats. You know what I mean? Uh, our customers, once they get into our boats, they typically stay into them and uh, they love them. Sometimes they venture out in other brands, but they usually come back because right. they, they call it the ride, but really it's the whole experience of, of the boat. And a lot of that's due to the, the whole construction process, our, our ram cap process, right? So we, we built, it's kind of hard to describe. It's easy to see once we go out in the lamination, you can see it, but we built this model to give you an idea, right? So there's a, it, it's all composite, right? There's, there's our hull. Right, the outer shell of the hull. It's built up of all composite materials, right? There's no wood in it or anything like that. And then all of our boats have foam flotation, right? So even the 455 over here, our biggest boat, has positive flotation. And a lot of them do not, right? Across the industry, but ours do. And the way we do it is what's unique to uh, our build methodology, right? So uh, we pre-mold these big foam logs, right? So when you go over to East, you'll see they like coffins. There's these steel molds that have like steel all over them because there's a lot of pressure involved. And we build these big giant logs, and they're they're uh, shaped so they fit precisely to the hull bottom, right? So pre-molded, and then the density is a lot higher of the foam than what you would see in other other manufacturers. So we're 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 creating foam at six pound density. Typical industry standards around two pounds, maybe three, right? So higher density foam. The reason we do that. It's for several reasons. One's for structure, and then uh, also uh, because they're so large, we want higher, higher shear strength for them. So we, we pre-mold these big logs, right? And they're they're precisely fit into the hull. We lay up the hull, and then we drop in these logs just to fit them in, right? And then we have a full liner. So the whole inside of the, uh, the hull has a liner. So the whole surface. You go into any Everglades and cut through any access hole, you're not gonna see raw fiberglass, you're gonna see a liner. This is just a section of a liner just to kind of show you what's going on. And what we do is once we have the hull shell, we put the logs in and then we vacuum the liner and the logs all together, right? So basically the hull shell, the logs and the liner are all bonded in one large cohesive part, right? Under vacuum, right? It's big, right? So vacuum can have uh, a full vacuum, you know, 2000 pounds per square foot. You know what I mean? So we're talking about hundreds of thousands of pounds of force pushing together the, the liner and the hull all together. And that makes a very solid structure. Uh, when you jump waves and you land down hard, you'll you won't hear any rattling. You know what I mean? It's also quiet. Uh, you'll hear that as you as you jump through the waves. So you're basically, it's almost like replacing these stringer and bulkhead bulkheads with these foam yep. logs, as you're saying, mm -hmm. just to keep it you know complete solid pieces. Yep. 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 How does that work with like running rigging or? Things like that. That's no, a good question, right? So it's a challenge for us, right? Because you have less less space. A typical haul with the, just the egg crates with bulkheads and stringers, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You have lots of room to, to run uh, run rigging. So a lot of it has to run down the center, right? A lot of it has to run down the center. We do do some troughs, which you'll see, where we, you know you have to plan out where the you know where the routes have to be and run those through there. But yeah, once it's it's all together. You know, you can't, you know, later on be like, oh, I need to run a hose from here to here. You know what I mean? So, so we have to engineer and plan it all out beforehand, you know, so, okay. so we do that. And this is the fuel tank? Uh, that, that's the idea of a fuel tank. They're actually back here in the boat. So that one, the model got a little farther forward, but it just shows that you have a liner and then there'd be a, there'd be a tank. So Ramcap has two parts. One's the construction method, which is the logs and the liner and all that came together. The other one's the whole bottom shape, right? Let's kind of look at this one. T together is what makes the, the great ride of Everglades. So it's not a step tall, right? It's a variable dead rise hull, um, and it has very high dead rise, right? So our big boats typically have about 25 degrees dead rise aft, about 29 right where you stand and run the boat, and a really sharp entry, right? Big wide chines. What that does for us 
it gives you a great, great landing. You know what I mean? When you launch it in the air and you land down, the high dead rise really displaces the water. Gives you a great, great landing. They perform very well. You can turn them better than any boat I've ever been on. If you get on your next sea trial, you know, uh, maybe I'll be with you, but you get on it, just crank it over. I mean, it just yeah. digs in. Yeah, yeah, I did a little bit of that during our sea trial. Yeah, I was actually yeah. surprised of how agile it was for such, yeah. a, big, such a big boat. Yeah. Um, it's really fun to do that. So that's yeah. nice. The, the landing's really nice. It's nice and solid and quiet. Uh, high dead rise. Uh, you know, this is the Everglades. Everglades yeah. Right. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. So uh, that's Ramcap. That's our whole design. Any questions on that? We'll see it in real life and you'll be able to really understand it a little better. Yeah. Let me see it a little bit. But, uh, All makes sense so far. Cool. I wanted to mention uh, some other boats do do flotation, but they uh, they drill holes and pump foam in. Yeah. Right. I've seen that. One of the advantages of pre molding it is we inspect the logs, we weigh it, uh, you look at it, you know the density of it, you know exactly what you have and where. Where you pump foam in, uh, there's a there's a science and an art to it, uh, and you don't know exactly what you have. You know. Yeah. You, you have to. Uh, you have to do a lot of testing, uh, destructive testing and ventilation and things like that to make sure you get the foam where you want it. So we really like being able to have the pre-molded foam. We know what we have, we know the density of it and, uh, and it fits in where we want. Then we vacuum it down through the liner. <clears throat> Pretty cool. Very interesting. All right, cool. Let me uh, introduce you to some of the engineers if you want. This is Zach and this is Matt. And they're uh, engineers and designers for us. And uh, this is the room where a lot of the, uh, the, the models come to life. We design everything in the computer. So we can do a virtual build, uh, we can do analysis uh, before we go to tool. You know, so like I said, we do uh, in-house design here. Uh, we're doing all the, uh, the naval architecture, the structural design, uh, mechanical systems, uh, everything we're done here. Uh, we build some of the molds here, but we send we send these CAD files out to, uh, to get built and uh, do the tooling mm -hmm. outside, but it all, it all happens here. All right, so this is an example of the CAD model of the 45, which you guys are on. And uh, we can spin it around, but we, we model everything. Uh, and then, like I said, we could adjust things in the computer easily. Uh, you know, before we go to hard tooling, really optimize it. We can do analysis. A really critical part of our design process is getting the input of our dealers and our customers, right? So we use this information to uh, do our reviews. And it's, it's a really fun part of the, uh, the, the project. And I uh, try to get people to have a lot of experience or potentially are going to buy the boat understand what their challenges and preferences are, show them the boat, and really refine things before we go uh, go to hard tools. And that's, a, that's right. been real beneficial for us. Thank right, cool. you, Matt. Thank you, Zach. Yeah, Appreciate thank it, you guys. Bob's a, uh, a quality technician for us. you have a second, Bob? Just talk sure. to him. Sure. Yeah, sure. Just wanted to show him the, show him the lab. So uh, quality is real important at Everglades. And uh, we're building composite materials. And one of the real important things that we do is to make sure that all the materials uh, pass our incoming analysis before we're using them to make a boat, right? Mm. So all the resins, the gel coats, uh, the catalysts, uh, liquid properties, uh, we go ahead and test them when they come here and make sure that they uh, they pass the criteria that we need before we send them out to, to make boats. Right? So what kind of test do you do here, Bob? We test the resin that comes in tankers. Uh, before the tanker is unloaded, we test the resin. It's got to meet the engineering specifications. And, uh, Every delivery? Pardon? Every delivery of resin? Every delivery. And uh, if there's a big issue with it, you know, all the engineering, let them know what the problems are, and get a final approval from them. Okay, then the gel coat is also tested. It's color matched because uh, different batches that come in could be just a hair off. So we, so we had to keep the same boat with the same batch throughout the entire boat. Mm -hmm dive doors, uh, whatever the parts may be. So the, all the gel coat is tested. It also has to meet specifications. If not, the engineer will be notified. And they will make the uh, final decision. Okay. So, and here's uh, up here, the numbers are put down for public view, where people know what was tested, when it was tested, and uh, what the numbers were. Before we ramp cap a hall, uh, there's tons of things we have to check to make sure everything's the way we want it uh, before we build a hall and make sure that it's uh, very high quality. So how many things do we check? How many light items do you think before we, before we ramp cap a hall? There... I've got this right oh, here. There are... Just the take a guess. Just take a guess. Yeah, I'm checking this one today. Just take it's a uh, guess. 31 items. 30, just for dry Just 
make sure the liner is going to fit the hull. Yeah. Wow. Right. So there's lots of liner. And to squish the hull, which is extremely vital, that's what makes the part, mm -hmm. which has the lifetime transferable warranty, which means uh, it's going to last longer than you or me both. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Appreciate yeah. it. Nice to meet you, Bob. Thanks for coming by. All right. All right, so where are we headed? We're heading to lamination. Want to see our halls and decks built. Let's go. Let's go. Let's, Let's, go. Let's go this way. way. Yeah, we'll go this Alrighty. way. So this is our lamination building, and like I said, nobody builds boats like uh, Everglades does. We we talked about Ramcap, now you'll actually get to see it in action, right? Awesome. So, uh, you know, this is our schedule. So we have the boards that track metrics to make sure our lamination department's up and running the way it needs to be. Parts are getting built per the schedule. We also track weight and quality metrics on, uh, on these boards over here. We'll go ahead and check out some parts. All right, so this is our 335 hall, right? And we have several halls that are in different stages of construction, right? So this one here, they're just starting to build the hall shell, right? So we do, uh, we do uh, the gel coat, and then there's a vinyl ester barrier coat, and then there's a skin coat, and then they tab out the strakes, and that's where we're at right now, right? So they'll finish bulking this hall, uh, where the hall shell will be built, and then we'll fly in the logs, and then we'll vacuum in the liner. Right, so we'll see all that. So this is kind of this is the first stage, right? So this is hand laid. This is hand laid. Yep, it is all hand laid. Okay. Uh, all composite, right? So no balsa wood. We use all foam right. cores. So this is a 273 hull, and this is the hull shell after it's been bulked, right? So that's a skin coat. And then we have additional layers of glass in the bottom and the sides, and you can notice now how it's ground for surface preparation. Yep. That's a really important part of the uh, the hull construction process. We're going to bond everything together and a good good grind is super important to get that secondary bonding. So this represents a finished hull shell before we start putting in the logs and, and the liner. And I wanted to show you how it has uh, just really good grinding for surface yep. preparation. Yep, nice and even, definitely. Uh, we'll have no problem adhering to that. And this is what, the same, same model? This is 273, so oh, they're all okay. different. Each mold oh, okay. is a unique model. Oh, okay, this is the, gotcha. Yeah. So this cart represents some of the reinforcements that are go, gonna go into the hull. And what I want you to take away is they're all composite, right? There's no wood, nothing's right, gonna, gonna rot, right? So our hull bottom core is a high density core. We use PVC cores and also linear foam cores. The transoms are built up of a very high density core. Some of them are 25 pound density. And then we also have high density inserts anywhere we drill a, uh, a through hull through the hull bottom. You know what I mean? So we're not going right through the, uh, the lower density core. We put high density inserts in in any of the penetrations. Oh, right? nice. And that goes back to what we showed in engineering where we map out all of the, the routing and the through hauls. And that's so we can uh, put in these, these high density inserts. So these are just some examples of the, of the parts and pieces that are gonna be squished into the hull. Right. So these are our foam logs. And like I said, nobody builds boats like Everglades does. This is real important for our ramp cap construction, right? Mm -hmm. So each of these logs, is individually molded in its own mold, right? And that's to get that precise geometry so everything fits the way we want it, right? So these logs are six pound density. You can feel them, they're really dense, two to three times denser than what typical foam is. We use these logs for flotation, but also structure, right? So what happens is you saw the hull shell earlier. Next step is to drop these, these foam logs in place and then vacuum the liner on top of it. So it's all cohesively bonded to have a really strong uh, structure. Yeah, I can imagine once that's all put together, it being incredibly strong. And like you said, not having to, I guess, taking the guesswork out of it where you know you basically don't have any air voids or any exactly. open space. Yeah. So, yeah, this is serious stuff. <laughs> Check out our 395. So this one's already been ram capped, right? Let's go up there and you can see that oh, okay. the full liner is already vacuumed down. All right, let's go take a look. Ah. Oh, wow. So 395, right? So like I said before, anywhere you drill access into an Everglades, you're gonna hit finished liner, you know, a surface liner, right? So the whole hall shell is mirrored with a, with a full liner and that's what this part is. This has already been vacuumed together. So under all these areas, outboard. That's crazy. That's where the foam logs are. That's where your flotation is. Under the center here, you have some, some foam coring for the hull bottom. Uh, and then you have your hall shell outboard of it. But this is our foam log. It's all vacuumed together. You can see here the different pressures and times that we monitor while we're doing it. It's very serious to get this 
uh, the way we want it. But there's a tremendous force over this whole liner pulling it together. And that's what you feel as you're jumping waves. That very solid, cohesive structural response is, is because of the way this thing's built. So then, then the actual deck goes on top of this? Yeah, so on top of this, you know, the deck will go down, which we'll see in assembly. The deck will bond kind of in this area right here. Okay? Mm -hmm. wow, so as so you're walking on the boat, right, <laughs> if you were to drill a hole, yeah, you go through the deck, then the liner, then the log, and then the hull shelf. So Does a lot, the lot deck of redundant uh, actually have a, another hull side piece to it, or is it just a, the flat part of the deck that adds on to this piece? Yeah, so different, different areas have different things. You know what I mean? Some areas you can access the actual liner of the hull side. Other ones are covered up, which you'll see them in, in assembly. Wow. So everything's totally finished out. That's you know? incredible. Yeah. yeah. I literally had no idea you guys did this. This is impressive. Yeah, so it's it's expensive for us to tool up a new model because you can imagine we have the tooling of the hull, tooling of the yeah. logs, and also the liner. Wow. But that's that's the secret of uh, that, that you feel it to get that, that, that wonderful ride, you know, that solid feel. And it's also nice and quiet when you're out there running. How long have you been doing that? About almost five years. Five years, yep. five years. Yep. That's awesome. So uh, Chris works very hard and uh, he does a lot of work back in this building and he's been an integral part of uh, a lot of Everglades boats that come out of here over five years. So yeah. nice. thank you for what you're doing. Yeah, no problem. No problem. Hey, you guys doing impressive work. Thank you. Very Thanks. nice to meet you. You guys have a good day. Thank you. Awesome. Hey, let me show you a liner. This is a liner. So this is what a liner looks like before it's bonded into the hull. Wow. Right, so you can see it's kind of a mirror shape of the hull shell and then also the logs. You know, it's fully tooled. And again, it's all composite and then we grind it real good for great surface preparation. And that, that geometry is so important that it matches everything when we back it all down together. What are you adhering this piece onto the hull with? It's all solid fiberglass, right? So uh, uh, resin and chop, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. Yeah, so the tolerances are small. And then the vacuum. You basically just together. code the whole thing, and yep, yep, yep. It's all it's all set into fiberglass. So you guys get an idea what they've been explaining to us here, because honestly, we had no idea that this happened here at Everglades. We're learning along with you guys, but basically, what they do is. They hand lay each hole mold exterior piece. They sand it down, grind it down to be able to get a good bond to the liner piece, which is this right here. Within these two spaces is the ram cap high density foam, which is also CNC cut to match the exact curvature of the bottom of the hole. So it sits in here, this piece goes in, then it ends up like that 39 we saw, a completely finished interior. So it's not like you're just finishing a build or finishing some boxes or even your console space. These guys finish the entire length of this boat. And then once you finish it off, you drop this piece, which is the final deck with your boxes, insulated fish coolers, and everything else. So it's just an extra step that Everglades takes between the high density foam ram cap system, the extra liner, providing you that extra finish, pretty much anything you open and get underneath this deck is gonna be finished with that initial liner. And then you get this. So you get a nice, husky, solid boat that's gonna ride incredibly solid, incredibly smooth with that direct monohull, no steps on these boats. And just, it's clear to see why Everglades has picked up that reputation that they have. And it's nice for us to finally be able to get to see it in person. Hope you guys are enjoying this so far. Let's continue along. So you can see we keep a lot of molds outside just due to how many we have. They're all covered, which protects them from the sunlight and uh, helps us to retain a very high quality finish. Real important for us. Yeah, sure. So I want to show you our R&D area and then also our, our machine shop. Our machine shop's uh, really unique and uh, I think you're going to like that. We do two things here. We take care of our molds. So we do mold maintenance. You can see the guys working on the molds. Uh, molds are extremely important assets for us. Uh, they create the finished parts, right? So we make a big investment wow. to make sure the molds are well maintained and finished. Uh, we also build new product in here. Uh, this is exciting. It's a new boat for us. This is hull number two, and uh, we're building the boat uh, out here. The hull number three will be built on the production floor. Okay. Uh, we won't tell you what this one is, but right now hull number one's in the Bahamas. Uh, for our customer rendezvous, so it's kind of exciting. But we can walk up on here if you'd All like. Right. We'll let the viewers uh, take some guesses at it. 
All right, so this is interesting to see the R&D department. You can see how much effort they're putting into these molds over here. Unbelievable. Obviously, that's worth its weight in gold, so you got to maintain them, but you don't see that very often, taking that type of care uh, continuously, I imagine, on, on molds. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Appreciate that. So like all Everglades, this boat is built with a ram cap process, right? So you're walking on the full liner with the logs underneath of it, like we saw in lamination, right? We have our single fuel tank here, aluminum fuel tank. Uh, this one's 200 gallons, composite bulkheads on either side of it. And then you can start to see all the systems laid out. There's a water tank aft. And you see that big metal shear plate across the transom? That's just an example of the really robust structure that we build to try to reinforce our, uh, our transoms and make sure that they're they're stronger than they need to be. Got your through hauls up here. Like I said before, all the through hauls are in high density inserts, so we map out where they go. You see the through hauls with seacocks on them, the fish pump, uh, fish macerator pump there. We got the battery charger. And then you can see the storage up in the bow. Uh, this would be the bow seats. I see the tracks you're talking about for the rigging. Yeah, right. So we, we showed you the CAD like model uh, where we model everything out so we know where the routes are going to be and we plan for the uh, troughs in the liner where the, where the rigging's going to go. This is going to go up to the, uh, gotcha. the fuel fuel fill and uh, vent come through here. One important part of our uh, new product development process is getting the input of the dealers and the customers. And one way we do that is through mock-ups. So we have a mock-up of the next new model over here. We build it out of uh, plywood that's cut on our router oh, really? for the CAD model. And you can walk through it and really feel what we like, uh, get input from people, make revisions as necessary. So it's not done, so it's not too impressive at this yeah. point, but you can get a feel for the, the deck and, uh, and sure. what we do. If you want to go check out our mock-up. Oh, just, uh, just the process of doing that alone is impressive, in, in my opinion. <laughs> so nice to see. All right, welcome aboard, guys. You're the first ones ever to walk on this one. <laughs> wow, look at that. Again, we won't tell you the details about it, uh, but this is uh, the next new project for us. And like I said, this is a valuable tool for us. We design everything in the computer, use our experience, and uh, get it the way we want it. But until you really walk on it and you feel the, the freeboard height and you feel sure. the spatial relationship to things, uh, you can't really get a sense of what the boat is, you know what I mean? Sure. So we want to make sure it's perfect uh, the way we want it before we commit to hard tooling and actually build it. Yeah. Right. So this is just an example of part of our process. Uh, you were on our 45. We had the whole thing mocked up. You know, yeah. We put hardware, the rod holders, everything. It was pretty neat. Uh, we had a lot of people on it and uh, made some great revisions, you know, some, some really nice comments that, that made the boat uh, even better than it would have been if we hadn't done this. So yep. I'm a big fan of this, uh, this part of the process. I agree. Oh, minimizing your margin of error. Any, anybody that creates, you know, a design or a boat on a computer can look pretty, but again, until you actually put yeah. something in real life, physical like this, you really can't tell if that console could have gone down an yep. inch or leaning right. post up an inch or right. wider, you know, so this is a huge step on really, you know, Getting to that final, you know, perfect or as close to perfect as you can final yeah. product. You know? No, so, I appreciate that. I agree. That's awesome. That was fantastic. So we have two pieces of equipment I like to point out. This is a fabric cutter, right? So the glass, uh, fiberglass patterns that are put on all of our fiberglass parts. Uh, we design them in the computer. They're cut on this cutter, so the dimensions are exactly the way to be, so the laps are exactly the way to be. Nice. Uh, so it's real important for us. We cut all of our fabric on that. Uh, that piece of equipment over there is our CNC router, and it cuts all of our foam patterns. Mm. So excuse me one second. Sure. So you can see like these pieces here in the glass. So if you, if, if you, if you were going to build a, a hatch today, Alan, I would give you, here's the pieces for it, right? And they would fit perfectly, right? So we're not relying on you to use your scissors or anything right. like that. It's all cut and the patterns are the way the way we want it. It's kind of like that boat in a box that I guess yeah. is a product that is offered out there, but you guys do that all here in house. house. Yep. That's yep. awesome. Yep. Yep. Some of our boats in a box there, you can see they're, they're uh, you know. Yeah, that's amazing. All kitted up. It helps us be efficient on labor, but also gets exactly the right materials where we want them in the right shape, yeah. controlling weight. And, uh, You've seen obviously a lot of, you know, boat building in the in this past years and everybody does what they can, but obviously seeing foam cut with like diagonal edges oh, and yeah. everything being exactly to the point with the same reveal all the way across. Yeah. It makes all the difference in the world and obviously you're saving material yeah. uh, beyond the, just the look of it and the quality of it, but I love to see that. I mean, it's a huge, and to, for you guys to do it in-house is obviously really nice. Yeah, those, those really details nice. are so important. Yeah. Well, I'd like to show you our That's machine great. shop. We're really uh, proud of this. I think you'll yeah. get a kick out of it. Sure. 
All right, so Everglades has a really great metal shop, aluminum and steel. Uh, the company started building tops and towers for other companies, and then that grew into obviously what it is today. Uh, but we do a lot of our fabrication in-house. We can control the, the quality of it. So we'll build uh, our own rails and tops and towers. Uh, you can take a Frames look around and mold, see. I see. Oh yeah, yep, that's yeah, awesome. we're building a, uh, that's a, uh, that's a mezzanine seat right there. Uh, we're, we're building a new mold and putting the bracing on it there. But you can look around, you can see some of the equipment and capabilities we have. Not ever, but not all manufacturers have that, so we're pretty no, proud of it. No, it's nice and organized too. We got uh, several weld booths back here. Uh, they're working on some tops. You know, there's a seat there, there's some rails, and there's always tons of parts uh, that we build here. This example of a top, this is a 243 top. Uh, you know, you can look at the welds and see how well executed yeah. everything is, but it's real important to us that everything fits the way we want it. Uh, and then also that uh, it's at the, the quality that we demand. Right. Here's some hard top racks. These ones go on the 395. So my man here is uh, is getting ready to, to put a sea keeper in a cradle. How we doing? Oh, look at that. So this is a sea keeper cradle, uh, fiberglass part that's bonded in. You know, the structure of a sea keeper is obviously uh, something that you need to do right. There's a big aluminum plate uh, where he's drilling right there, and that's where the bolts of the sea keepers will go in. And there's helicoils, so it's real important we get him in the right spot. And uh, he's using the, the drill press, obviously, to do that. And then that whole system will be bonded in with a methacrylate adhesive uh, right into the liner and the hall bottom to give you a rigid structure for the for the sea keeper. Very nice to be able to have control over everything here. I mean, obviously, it's nice to be able to subcontract and get some of the stuff out of your hair. But when you have it here in house and your own labor, you have full control of what happens and when it happens, which is extremely nice as a boat builder. All right, so this is our finishing area, right? So after the big parts come out of lamination, they go to trim and grind. to get all the holes cut, the flange trims. We have lots of splashes and templates that do that. We didn't go in there, but okay. after that, we come over here into finishing, right? So this area, uh, we make sure the finish is gonna be just perfect, the way our, our customers need it to be, right? So. We spent a lot of time up front getting a good finish, but this is where it really happens, where the guys, they really look at every area with lights and they do the die gum and they, they polish and buff everything and make sure everything is finished out uh, the way it needs to be before it goes up into uh, assembly. All right, we made it. We're in assembly building. This All is where right. the boats come to life. We have seven lines here, and the way the plant's set up, the smaller boats are on the east side here and they get larger as you move over to, to line seven. Okay. So they're all working our way towards the wash pad uh, we have a pool, which you'll see, where we'll water test. And then all the big boats, uh, since they're right here on the intercoastal, we'll tow down to the water, take them out in the ocean, and do all our system checks in the actual ocean. All okay, right? very nice. So, uh, let's, let's check out some boats. Let's do it. This is our uh, largest boat, our 45, our flagship, which you guys did a great review of. Hall number 11. They just set the deck yesterday. So, uh, what we can do is uh, come up and take a little look at, uh, at, at this boat if you'd like. All right, so this boat will get uh, quad Yamaha 425s. You know, it doesn't have the engines uh, installed on it yet, but you can all see right. we have all the, the holes drilled. You know, it's ready, ready, ready for installation. All right, 455, like I said, they just set this deck yesterday. Uh, so, all the mechanical systems down in the hall are already in. You can see this one has a Seakeeper 6. And then there's a uh, generator just aft. You can see all the systems and all the routing are installed. The fuel tank, uh, this one's 680 gallons, you know, single fuel tank, aluminum. And again, you got the, the liner and the logs. Uh, you can see, and then the deck sitting on top of that. It's a fuel tank, the water tank. You know, this is a, the interior, a little different view of it. Yeah. It's always interesting to see uh, a boat of this size without the console in it. It yeah. looks like a... <laughs> Monster. This one has a bow thruster in it. Uh, the big fish box and storage up forward with the table and all the all the features. Very nice. Oh, it's nice to see it all kind of come together piece by piece as we have here today. So I'm really excited to show you uh, hole number 10, just forward of it. It actually has a lot of custom items on it oh, that really? I think you'll find interesting. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, let's check that out. So this is a 395 deck here, and you can see we install all the all the cleats, all the rod holders, all the hardware. 
beforehand. Um, yeah, it's comfortable to be able to work right here. Yeah, yeah. yep, yep. It's a nice cradle. Uh, we, in design, we, we also make sure you can access all these things after the fact too, but, but definitely in assembly, this is the, this is the way to do yeah. it. We maximize every little space with some, some features. So, you know, we had some space here, so there's a really nice gunnel storage box with the net in it. Makes it some great storage. Oh, nice. Well, so you can out. see where all the uh, all the renderings and design come <laughs> into play, having all this fall into place the way it does. Yeah. If you don't do it the way you guys are doing it, I think you could never get close to fitting all this into into a boat as you know cleanly as you do. Great to see where boat building has come and where it's headed. All right, so as we as we go closer to our wash pad, the, the boats get more and more towards completion. Uh, we'll go up on this uh, 455 hall number 10 here and show you a couple okay. cool things. Do you guys ever do anything with the Omni sonars? Omnisense? Like the, the. Oh, no, no, the. No, no, I have not. Yeah. The so, sonar, yeah. This one has one? Yeah. Yeah, man. So this is the first boat. Uh, this, this, this customer is a very serious fisherman and he, uh, he's putting in a, a sonar with the tube that drops down below. I so that's, that's the tube and the uh, fairing and everything. I know, this Paul's boat? Paul, Paul Robertson, FFMD, yep, yep. Oh, yeah. awesome. So he's got a lot of cool things. Yeah. Uh, we're really excited about seeing this sonar come together. We hadn't done one before, but uh, it, I've it's heard, I've heat. heard all kinds of craziness on those, yeah. those sonars. Never experienced one in person, but maybe with Paul we'll get the chance. Yeah. But we've talked quite a bit about his boat and- Oh yeah. Um, gotten to become you know good friends with him and he's, he's amazing he's a great guy yeah we really appreciate what he does is great yep. so yep it's a great charity and uh he's a great ambassador for our brand yeah so uh sure. and we're excited to get in this boat we've worked worked real hard on it yeah uh let me show you some cool things but that's the uh the fairing for the uh, sonar which is kind of neat that is cool Yeah, so uh, th this boat, the boat, the 45 you were on before had a mezzanine seat, yeah. right? Uh, this is an iteration of a, uh, a bait and tackle station. And it actually has some custom items that, uh, that uh, Mr. Robertson wanted. But uh, in the place of the mezzanine seat, it's a really great uh, tackle station. I uh, got some great storage, a refrigerator and a freezer. This lid opens up and you got some great uh, rig rigging center nice. uh, areas. Uh, you know, you can still climb up and get to your uh, second station. Let me show you one thing pretty cool up here. So it's not finished yet, but you get the idea. So uh, we're, we're, we put a hatch in the hard top and uh, there's gonna be an elevator installed. Paul loves the fish from the second station. He was telling me about that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah so this is it, man. So he's gonna, the, awesome. the elevator will attach here. He'll stand on it and it'll go up through that hatch and close the hatch. And uh, that way it'd be real comfortable coming up and down. That's amazing. That ought to be great for them. Yeah. So th this stage of the process, we fire, we power up the boat, we do all our system checks, uh, you know, and, and, and again, uh, make sure everything's working the way, the way we want it to. Uh, you know, this boat has a FLIR camera on it and there's several smaller custom, custom items. Uh, so we're checking to make sure all those things work. And uh, okay. this is planned to actually go to the water uh, early next week. So we're really oh, excited really? about that. Okay, almost there then. Yeah. Very nice. No shortage of garments on this one, huh? <laughs> all this. Yeah. We have the 322 inch screens, 216s here, and then there's another one on the second station. <laughs> oh. This has the same system that the dealer demo boat had on it? Yeah, sure. This is our, our digital switching system. Uh, we partnered with uh, Garmin. Our 395 was actually the first production boat to have the Garmin digital switching system. Uh, now you see it on lots of boats, but it's unique to our boat, right? You can see yeah. an image of our boat. You can see our systems page over there and you control lots of lights and features. As you turn something on, it shows up on the icon. It's really neat. So it's really great digital switching. That gives us a lot of functionality. Uh, we also have the tactile switches. So if you don't like playing with the digital switching, uh, you can control everything through the tactile switches also. Very nice. You wanna see that sonar tube on the inside? Sure. So the system's not installed yet, but the, uh, the tube's here. <laughs> But you can see we, we were able to integrate the system in and still have a great interior. We have the countertop that lifts up and you get access to the, uh, the tube. So the actual unit will mount on top of that and it'll stow just under this, uh, this countertop area. Wow. So it'll deploy down and then you can uh, retract it. Oh, so it actually ex yeah, extends deploys down. outward? Yep, yep, it sure does, yep. yep. Oh. But I'm excited that we were able to integrate it in 
yeah. uh, and still have a great interior. Yeah, I know you realize it's there. <laughs> yep, it's great. Cool. Well, this has all been very impressive. <clears throat> Definitely appreciate the tour. Thank you very oh, much man. for Pleasure. Appreciate what spinning you do. around. We weren't expecting all this. So <laughs> again, we try to just learn as much as we can from experts, you know, throughout the industry and we pass it along to you guys. It's been eye-opening about Everglades for us. So I definitely appreciate all the information. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Like, subscribe, any questions you have, reach out to us. We'll pass them along to uh, to the group here and try to get them answered as best we can for you. And we'll get we'll be back with more content like this here soon, hopefully at center consoles only.